go ahead, take a deep breath, pull it in, hold, and let it out. You're here today to develop and strengthen your mindset because you know that weekly training sessions and mindfulness is the missing link the world is searching for when it comes to business success. So set aside the external logistical side of business growth and come with me now to a world of focus, purpose, calm, confidence, and personal power using NLP and CBT tools and techniques. I am your host, Leah Marie, and you're listening to Flip the Switch. Hey, you guys, welcome back to another episode. So excited to be with you again today. So today we're really talking about the truth and the lies around time management and the whole idea of having perfect timing on things. So let's look at truth and lies. Have you ever heard somebody say, or maybe you said this yourself, there's just not enough time. Well, who hasn't, right? I mean, the biggest reason we have this problem is because we are struggling so much and there are lies out there that we have just grown up with and we don't know any different. So today we are going to talk about three truths and a lie. Have you ever played that game? Maybe you played that game as a kid. So we're going to play this game. We're going to play with two truths and a lie, but I'm not going to make you guess. I'll actually give it away. So by the end of this episode, you'll have clarity as to where your thoughts are when it comes to how you use your time and how you may want to shift into creating more space with less stress in your life to really crush it when it comes to productivity. Now, of course, you'll want to stay to the end because I have a surprise announcement and you won't want to miss out on that. So let's get started. All right, you guys, what we hear all around us is this whole idea of time management. And when I say time management, I'm using the little bunny ears with my fingers to say that because it's a big fat lie. It's a big fat lie, you guys. There's no such thing as time management management. We can't manage time. So no wonder so many of us are struggling to get it all done and feel like we're just failing all along the way. Oh my goodness, we have been sold a lie. Here in Flip the Switch, we're going to expose this lie and step into the light. We're going to expose the truth about time and how to leverage it to our advantage. Let's start off with exposing the lie. Have you ever taken a clock and turned the hands back on it? Well, of course you have. So what happens if, let's just say, for example, you bought a new watch and you pulled out the little plastic piece that separates the battery and then you start to shift and move the little hands around in order to set the right time. Now, let's say that you decided to set the clock an hour earlier because you were running late that day. I mean, after all, you're in control of your time and you want to manage it. You want to manage the hours in the day, the days in the week. Okay, but obviously you're seeing the flaw in this. Time doesn't stop or stand still or go backwards for anybody. We don't manage or control it. So what do we control? Well, that's a great question. We control us, ourselves. Who do we manage? Not time, we manage ourselves. We prioritize and we set boundaries. Then we show up with integrity and keep our word to ourselves the way we would to others. Now, I know that seems like a hard thing, which is why my clients come to me, because I make hard things easy. We get in there on the subconscious level and switch things up, creating a smooth transition from hard to easy. But inside this episode, we really don't have the space to be able to jump into all of that. But what I will give you is the three truths that will help you move forward right away. So let's look at what we can really do to start having control of our time. Number one truth is we determine our time usage. Yes. We choose to spend it, waste it, or 
invest it. Spending time looks like a trade. For example, making a meal, we trade time for the prep, the cooking, the eating, and the cleanup. We could really trade off this time. And what we're doing is we're actually getting something of value in the moment. So our time equals something of value. And that is a good way to be able to spend our time because it's kind of like money. We will spend our money on something, but we're getting something in return, right? Now, we could also waste our time by consistently choosing to give things um, like our time over to something with no uh, return of investment. So it would be kind of like you're hungry and instead of making a nutritious meal, you are just eating marshmallows, right? There's no return of investment on that whatsoever. So maybe it's kind of also something like this. We're entertaining ourselves for the moment, but that's it. This could look like endless scrolling on social media with no real purpose other than to see how others are living out their dreams or maybe to compare ourselves with their successes or failures, giving us a false sense of security and a false sense of our own status. Now, let's take a shift and look at what investing time looks like. Investing time means that there's a rate of return that continues after the fact. So that looks like learning something new, building relationships. We're putting into something that not only is rewarding in the moment, but it continues to roll back to you and me in the future. Now, some of you might be thinking, but I don't get to choose how I spend my time. I have kids that me need me, a boss or deadlines waiting on me. Uh, let's not be fooled here, folks. You chose to have those children. Even if it was a surprise, you are choosing to care for them in a way that you see as appropriate and responsible. You chose the job or to create the product or to launch the project. Yes, you're living into the consequences of these things. But at any time, you really could, if you really wanted to, get up and walk away from it all. Now that'd be pretty sad and devastating in many, many reasons. But remember, the choice is still yours. You are choosing every day of every minute what your life will be like in the minutes and hours you have before you. And that, you guys, is a beautiful thing. It's really quite liberating to start seeing how much control we really do have. All right, now let's move on to truth number two. Truth number two is that we can make more time. Now, we can't manage time in the sense that we can't move it around and say, well, I want to take this hour and move it to that spot or rearrange things in that sense, but we can actually create time using a little thing called leverage. Now, how this works is it's like if you were to imagine yourself running a race, if you get tired in this race and you stop, this doesn't stop the clock, right? So we're not leveraging time, we're losing time. But I want you to imagine if you could run this race with team members, kind of like passing off the baton, you can then succeed in leveraging. Because what is now happening is that you have gotten tired or maybe you have other tasks you need to attend to, but you get to pass off that task to somebody else. So it continues to be able to be worked on. This allows for productivity to continue with the clock. Now I want you to imagine if you had multiple people, not just one other person helping you on the same project, then not only are you matching the clock, you're actually moving faster than it. In this sense, you're tripling the time it would take to have done the project by yourself. Okay, isn't that amazing, you guys? How often do we not ever consider that? And think about for a few minutes, there are many different ways that we can leverage our time. 
right? We can connect with other people. We could trade services if we need to in the beginning, or we could find somebody that is at the college that needs work experience and we could get them to work for us um, and they could put it in their portfolio and so it's not costing us anything. There are ways to be creative. You don't always have to fork over the money to make this happen, but when you're prepared and ready and you have the pieces in place, then you can start adding to your team just one person at a time and making sure that the tasks that you're giving them are truly the money-making, the action results taking stuff that is going to move the needle to make sure that you're not leveraging time for something that is just a waste. You wanna leverage time for something that's of investment value. Okay, so we know that this is the key to business success and life success, whether you're launching a service or a product or whether you're just trying to pack the vehicle for a family trip. We can multiply our efforts and create time, you guys, by adding more doers to the work. Let's move on to the third truth. When it comes to time, there is a trick. We can actually slow down when we want to speed up. Now, did you ever hear the story about the two woodsmen? Maybe you've heard a version. I'm going to share that story with you here because I think that it really applies. And you'll be able to just kind of get right into it and see it from another perspective. So there was these two woodsmen, and they both had one hour to cut as many trees as possible. They chose their tools to be an axe. They knew the task was a good use of their time because not only would the winner receive a cash reward, but they would get to keep whatever wood they each cut. Meaning no matter what, even if they didn't win the cash prize, they would still have a return on their investment. Now, the rules were that they had to go it alone. So leveraging wasn't an option. No one else could be part of their team. The clock was set and the men started chopping. The bigger and stronger of the two was making massive progress to start off with. The smaller was doing well, and he also had a great skill set. So they started out about matching neck to neck in their chopping. But after about 15 minutes, the larger man looked over to see the smaller man had stopped and was sitting down for a rest. He kind of chuckled to himself thinking, Oh, I have got this in the bag. And he just kept plowing forward. The man who had been taking the break got up and started to chop again. The big guy thought again, what a fool this small man is as he continued to push and push with his chopping and his effort moving forward. Now, this entire thing kept happening every 15 minutes with the smaller man stopping for a few minutes to rest. Now, an hour had gone by and the clock was up. The time had come to end the competition. And when the logs were counted, the smaller man had won. The big man was shocked and, of course, demanded to know how this had happened. The smaller man said, Well, you were working with a dull axe. I, on the other hand, had stopped to sharpen mine. And because of this, it took me half as many swings to drop the tree. I also received a small break as I would sharpen the ax, so my body was actually refreshed, and I was able to put more energy into each of my swings. Okay, you guys, come on. What can we learn from this? We don't want to be working with dull tools, let alone a dull brain, because we're so overworked and exhausted, right? We need to remove a few things from our plate. And that's another analogy in itself. Let's just think for a few minutes. We always talk about this whole idea of, oh, I've got too much on my plate. Okay, well, what do we do with stuff that's on our plate? We consume it, right? We put it in our body and we consume it. Now, what do we do when we're at work? We are filling our brains and our time and everything around us, and we are consuming constantly all of the noise, all of the information, all of the to-do lists, everything that's coming at us. But when do we stop to say enough is enough? Think about what it's like to be able to just either take a smaller plate 
and pick the amount of food that you want and be able to really enjoy that food and feel satisfied versus picking a massive plate that has heaping amounts of food on it that we are looking at, we cannot finish, we are overwhelmed by this and our body is feeling stuffed to the max. In the fact, we're almost feeling sick because we've overeaten so much. Now, I know some of you have experienced this, especially around the Christmas time or Thanksgiving dinners, right? But so much nicer when we get to have maybe one of those summer salads or something like that. That's just kind of that fresh piece, um, just the right amount, right? And that's what we want to be able to create inside of our businesses. We want to pick and choose what we're putting on our plate, what we're consuming, and when we're consuming it so that we can be fresh and ready and energized to be able to do the best work, to be the most productive that we can be. You guys, let's continue on with this. Let's do a little bit of a recap. We have talked about the lie. We've talked about the fact that we have been told that it is all about time management and that if we could just organize our time, then we could get it all done. But the truth is it's not about managing time. It's about managing ourselves, prioritizing and creating the boundaries to stick to the plan. Now, we talked about three truths as well. We talked about having the power to choose how we use our time, whether we're spending it, whether we're investing it, whether we're wasting it. And we talked about how we can create more time through leveraging. Now, the last thing that we touched on was how we can slow down and do the right things in the right order to actually speed up the process. Guys, these are simple concepts, but they make such a massive difference. So I am excited to invite you and to share some exciting news with you that I have created a free Facebook group called Flip the Switch that was recently put out there just for you. You can find it in Facebook and it's where we connect and we can go deeper where you can bring your questions and you can leave with answers. So consider this your official invite and I can't wait to see you there, you guys. Let me leave you with these two actions to take. Number one, take an honest look at your time usage and if what you're doing is working and if not, where can you adjust? Then If you're struggling with how to make those adjustments, bring your questions and join me in the Facebook group. That is where we can connect and that is where I can help you on a deeper level. We are going to be in the group, we are going to have fun and you're gonna bring your questions and get your answers. And that, you guys, is gonna take everything to a whole new level. When you can truly start knowing how to make the shifts and the adjustments that you need in order to up level and do it without overwhelm. I can't wait to be able to see you guys in the group. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode, you guys, and I can't wait to see you again next week. I want to sincerely thank you and appreciate you today for showing up here on Flip the Switch. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a training session in your mindset mastery leveling up your business success and be a good friend share this episode with a fellow business builder i'll see you next week same time same place